uh, monthly data where you normally look at weekly reports, but eventually you want to look at uh, overall your month-to-date report. So um, that's what we're looking at, uh, say, before tooling change or week one's data on the image A and image B has all the data for that month. So here's a use case for that. Um, in A, we see the previously shown data or the original report. And then on B, we can see uh, what the report would look like if you replace the data with just the new 10 samples. But if you merge them all together, now you get your product of, in C is all the data shown beforehand and after and all 20 samples are shown together, you see that there's obviously been a process change there. That may not be relevant, uh, that may not be apparent by just looking at one report and then another. But another use case would be to compare that information rather than seeing it all, uh, seeing it all on one uh, date line. So we wanted to go over uh, four different types of uh, of data comparison charts. Um, the comparator chart is very useful, uh, allowing you to overlay multiple trends. Uh, we've got up to eight unique symbols. Um, seen here, they're going to be in different, different shapes and different colors. This is our comparator with two data sets overlaid. We can go up to eight. Um, and there's the accumulator. The accumulator um, is mainly a different way of visually seeing the information, uh, but it has the benefit of allowing you to look at the same parts over many different assembly stages. And uh, there's the uh, tabular chart. Um, right now we have, I have all the statistics shown on this tabular chart. Uh, you're not going to see anything graphical here except for all the numbers of statistics and some uh, some color coding for passing and failing. Uh, another color coding passing fail uh, table style chart is the statistics and it, we see the deviation for the last 10 parts among these two data sets uh, plus a few key statistics as well. Yes. So go up one just real fast. Back to the slide. Yeah, I just I know I like the the D chart a lot just because it allows you to set the color coding for your spec limits, so you can very quickly see a whole lot of different data sets compared together and find out which ones are out of spec with a glance. So it's really nice for like an update report or like a real time monitoring report. Just something that you've got uh, auto generated, say every. Uh, 24 hours or in the morning waiting for you just so you can see really quickly if there's going to be a problem or an issue while you're, you know, getting your cup of coffee in the morning just to make sure there's nothing, uh, no emergencies for you waiting when you get in the office, you know? Right, right. And it's, uh, there's a certain logic behind it where everything that's green is within, is within 75% of the tolerance band and yellow is, be is between the 75th and the 100th percentile. And anything that's outside that is red. So we have, uh, I wanted to sh briefly show what's on an overlaid comparator chart. Um, we have the symbol legend that we just touched on. Uh, we've got a, uh, a common same X and Y axis for, for all the data sets that are pictured. Um, we also have uh, the same, we have the same spec limits, seen here as the, uh, the dotted lines. And we have uh, different stats and trends for each. Here we have the, uh, the statistics here on the rows beneath the uh, trend area. And uh, it can be updated with the auto wizard style feature that we are, that we're uh, about to go over. Um, here is a uh, page excerpt from a report uh, where these six features are measured and they're on the comparator chart. They're overlaid with each other. 
and uh, we want to show you what's on a um, accumulator chart. Uh, we've got uh, we've got some whiskers on the chart. Seen here in green. That's the mean for this data set. Um, the that's uh, at bubble C. I'm sorry, I'm jumping to C. Um, here's the other mean whisker for the second data set. Um, a, though, is the, uh, the overall axis here, and in black, that is, the, uh, that is the range of all the samples in this data set. This black bar here is the range for this data set. The white, the two different white bars are the, um, the tolerance band. <clears throat> right here we're only showing these two data sets on an accumulator chart, but it'd be most beneficial used to, use to check it through different stages of assembly. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll throw in one of the use cases for this would be a, a good, a good uh, uh, use case is the same feature that's measured through multiple stages of assembly. Sometimes the same feature is measured at the part level when it puts on when it's assembled on a sub assembly and then when it goes into the final assembly. So what happens is as the same feature is measured, you want it to visualize and then see if there is any mean shift introduced along the way. Um, maybe when at part level the mean came in perfectly, but as it moved to sub assembly one there was a little bit of mean shift and maybe when you when it went into the final assembly that same part the same feature has got a larger mean shift so the green line basically shows you where the mean for that particular feature at that particular stage is so when you're throwing in multiple stages of data and trying to create a comparison chart like this you could you could very easily see uh, where if any if there is a mean shift that's introduced in in the in the flow, and it also shows you uh, the the black bar basically shows you the range of data uh, where all the the range of the measurements are for that particular feature at that particular stage. So you can see if there was a larger variation variation introduced along the way at one of the stages. So it's very difficult to when you have ten samples from uh, text data from um, stage A, um, stage B, another 10 text data, and stage C, you got another 10 samples of test text data. It makes it very hard to to kind of go through all, sort through these papers to find out where really the shift happened and what was the shift and all that. By bringing it into a QDM report, very quickly you can, you can uh, identify if there is any shift for every feature in the report. Uh, Jamie is currently showing you one feature, but this could be for the entire assembly for all the parts. So the one report can highlight uh, your entire uh, uh, multiple stage process all captured in one report to make it easy to identify the, the, the issues. I, I just want to bring up a, a few quick questions that came up. One is you can see on this chart that the lower and upper spec limit are slightly different. Is there, a, uh, is there a reason for that? Um, I purposely used a different spec limit to show that, that this chart actually supports different spec limits. Um, so for example, if you just, just because I wanted to you know, say that on the comparator, you only have one visible spec limit range. So on this one, for example, so if we change the spec limit, say because we have to bring our spec limit, tighten it up because of some issue that's been addressed or been brought up, we can actually change and then still bring that, use that spec limit with the new data while having our old spec limit with the old data right. and try to hold them within it. And also the color coding on the bottom, uh, if you have set up your color coding for your capability CP and CPK, you can see where, which stage it was read and how it got to the, to the green um, and, and, and that's also visible 
um, right on the chart. So, so it, we call this an accumulator chart because it allows you to accumulate multiple stages of chart or data and represent them in one concise, easy to understand uh, chart attached to the leader line to where the measurement happened on the graphics. So it makes it easy for, for reading and problem solving and root causing. And then just real quick, looking at this chart here, I see I've got the, uh, it goes up to 2.70 and, and down to 1.21. Is it 0, 0 there, 0, 0, is that my, uh, my nominal at 745.64? Yeah, the 745.64 is a nominal for the feature where the target is, but uh, the means moving a little bit. If you look in the mean column in the bottom, um, 745.39 to 746.38, where it was a little bit out, okay, out so, of the range. So the 0, 0, 0. 0, is then just going to be the nominal value, and we're just showing the deviation, deviation. and we're not having the actual values on it. I can change those values to the bottom, of course, right? Yeah, yeah so that's that's. That's, it, it depends on what I want to see. Since we're just considering just the deviation with the assumption of the nominal there, we want to just focus in on that in this particular chart. Yeah. So this chart is not very widely used because uh, it's, uh, it, it's because of uh, uh, we, it's very powerful. It just needs to be understood a little bit so you could uh, use it. So we wanted to highlight this chart and um, for for the QDM 3D users. Uh, if you have a situation where you're comparing two sets of data and want to present it in a concise way, this is a very powerful chart. Yeah, I would definitely want to, you know, think it's underappreciated and want to see it used on, you know, difficult assembly parts like body sides, yeah. and doors, things like that. <clears throat> um, so here's just a... Uh, a page excerpt from a report. Um, this is the same data that was on the excerpt that had comparators overlaid, and now it has uh, accumulator chart style charts instead. So, so this gives you a very clear picture on a multiple features or on the top of the B pillar. How, if there is any mean shift along the assembly, you could very look at very easily look at it in one page. Um, now we go on to the uh, comparison on a tabular chart and what's supported on the tabular chart. Um, you also have the ability to support different spec limits, just like uh, just like we got the question about before. We, I put some different spec limits on on this table here, and uh, multiple different stats. The only visible indicators here are are your uh, criteria, whether it's based on your spec limit or your CP. That's going to be graded here by the color. Um, another example of this chart here is just with, without any stats, we're just seeing what's the mean over how many samples. You just have the label, the mean, the samples. So you have that ability to just strip it down to a couple columns. Um, I have one quick comment. So basically, the the tabular chart is uh, helps when you are only have uh, when you would like a lot of features to be reported on the same page, and you're only interested in if there is any difference in the mean between the two features, then you can choose the tabular chart and switch off all the statistics and just let the system only display the mean. So you can kind of fit 30 or 40 or even more number of charts on the same page. So you can uh, uh, really save on real estate and make your report smaller at the same time highlighting the difference that you want to highlight. Sometimes when you're trying to show the trend chart, it takes up a lot of room on the chart, but it gives you a concise um, uh, view and it allows you to choose whatever statistics that's important for you and, uh, uh, and, and display that. Okay. Um, now we're going to just show the same style page with the big tabular charts. So it's a nice way to compare all of our statistics on the big tabular charts. Can you go back and show that one more time? Yeah. 
<clears throat> so I can quickly see very fast all of my stats and all of my color codes based on whether they're in or out of spec. Yeah, it's a good right. page for the number crunchers out there. Gotcha. Good. And finally, um, using your statistics chart for comparison, um, statistics chart does allow you to support different spec limits, just like the previous two. Um, you get your different stats. You get your different stats for each each uh, data set row. Um, but overall, the the biggest benefit is you get the individually colored grading based on the tolerance band and deviation from it um, for each sample up to 10 within that data set. So it's good for comparing a lot of data and very quickly finding problem areas. Yeah, and, and this is the only chart in the system where it will allow you to give you real values, measured values, um, to be displayed on the chart. So if you are not interested in the trend, you really would like to see the, the measured values uh, between the two, two data sets. This chart allows you to display them, still giving you the, um, the leader lines pointing to the measurement. It's, 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 it's exactly the same as the competitor chart or any other chart, but it allows you to display the measured values and show you the, the color-coded pass-fail criteria so you can see if there is how many of them were red versus green very easily to visually see if there is an improvement. Yes, in a, in a page right out of a report, showing multiple features with statistics deviation is presented right here. So we can see very quickly that the top chart, I mean, you can it's see horrible. that, yeah, that there's, there's definitely a problem going on there. And when we did the fix, it didn't get fixed. So our, our change to tooling didn't fix it. And if, if the second set, the second set of data is our change to tooling, we now see that uh, we only had one problem with beforehand, and now that that problem still exists, and now it's created a number of other issues as well that we're going to want to dive into. And looking at our previous comparator charts, we saw that before we had a consistent problem with the lower spec limit, and now you can see that it's a problem with above the upper spec limit. So we've overcompensated. Which is sometimes a problem in dueling changes, especially dies. <clears throat> Lastly, uh, we wanted to go over how you would compare uh, your simulation data on your shop floor data, um, we can easily add a data set where you are looking at your shop floor data with one or multiple data sets from many sources right here on a comparator chart. Uh, but then you can also see what's really going on uh, if, your, um, if your simulation data is if your real data is doing what your simulation data is telling you're, go you're probably going to do. So I don't know if you've talked to our sales guys, a lot of times call this as-built correlation. So the simulation data here is coming from 3DCS software. So we've done a Monte Carlo simulation with our CAD model to determine how our, our fit and function, our build is going to come out. And now we want to, we actually built the product. We want to make sure and validate that we're doing our simulation. Our simulation is giving us results that are actually meaningful and accurate. So we're taking our, our data from our inspection devices that are inspecting our built product. We're taking a look at our Monte Carlo simulation data. We want to create some comparator charts to see how they match up. That way, as we move forward into additional product lines, we've got some validation of whether or not our simulation results are really proof and really show what we're actually going to make. So we can use those, for, we can use those confidently for design changes. Because during the design stages, you're assuming a certain capability that's possible on the shop floor in your production plans. But in reality, there may be a difference in what your assumptions are to what really the capability of the plant or the shop floor or a particular machine that's making that, put, that product or assembling that product in your shop floor. So this way, you'd be able to bring in the shop floor data and compare it with the simulation data and see, are you getting the same capability that you're expecting, expected during your design, or know your shop floor's capability uh, so that you can design your products better for the next term around or make changes to this one. Fantastic. 
Uh, now we're ready for some questions and answers. Well, go back to that previous one for a second. Mm -hmm. So right here, looking at chart A and, and the simulation data on B, so that's the, the straight simulation report that you're going to get out of 3DCS. That's just one of the basic uh, data outputs. We actually touched base on that on a previous webinar on 3DCS reporting. Um, I'll, I'll attach a link to that, actually, and the follow-up for this webinar, just in case you're interested in looking at how 3DCS reporting and how QDN reporting, how the two can kind of click together and integrate. I know a lot of our customers uh, start with 3DCS and then add QDM 3D or GDM analysts as a, a reporting tool to make use of a lot of that data. Um, so here on, on chart A, am I able to take my simulation data and do I plot it on a, a chart there or do I, am I able to do like a, a, a raw comparison between those two types of charts? the simulation data that I have there from my Monte Carlo simulation? Yeah. So, so the idea was to the ability to create a comparison report in QDM 3D. And uh, when this particular report is published on our web environment, on data from the shop floor is going into the database uh, where it's uh, stored. On the web environment, the user would be able to say, uh, I'd like to download the last 100 samples data for this body build uh, from my shop floor and be able to visualize the report comparing it to the 3DCS report right on, on, a, on a web page. So a lot of the reporting that we did, uh, that we showed you, demonstrated, are different functionality within the software to be able to compare the data sets, whether it's coming from uh, um, inspection devices or between before and after tool changes or from, a, from one supplier to another supplier or from data from a simulation to the as-built uh, design data. Um, the, the ability of all these are just the core functionality of the product that can be extended to a web environment and can be automated so that uh, the, the user is not really looking for this data anywhere other than the web system where they'd be able to easily navigate to any, any of these two data sets and create these reports um, uh, instantaneously on their desktop using a web interface. So to answer your question, yes, um, the, the concept is to be able to compare the two uh, data that's coming from, uh, from the two sources. Fantastic. So that answers that. So if you look here, what's really going on? So measure, measure data set or more, but is your process doing what simulation says it should? And this kind of report gives you your yes or no answer. Yeah, and <clears throat> this 3DCS chart has uh, 500 sample runs and uh, PP of 1.13. Looks like a very normal distribution and on the data set in the in chart A, we have 50 samples from the shop floor, and uh, the PP is 1.17, which is just slightly better. Fantastic. Now, can we do a comparison of the simulation run chart data over the same measurement data run chart within, like, one graph? Can you repeat the question? So, um, so I want my simulation data and I want my measurement data in the same chart. Can I do the two data sets overlaying, like, the previous comparator chart? Yes. Yes, you can do that in the in the same uh, in in you you then you would use a comparator chart or an accumulator chart where you would be showing the uh, the comparison between the two as a trend uh, and the calculated statistics will show up on the two line items below uh, the comparator chart. If you can go to that page where the comparator chart was, um, yeah, that's that page right yeah. here. So now the, yeah, the after tooling and before tooling could be uh, design data or the 3DCS data versus the shop floor data and the calculated statistics. So actually, would you be able to show us, can you generate one of these for us in the actual software? We have a couple minutes for the Q&A Q here. I know you have the software up already. Why don't you bring that up while we wait to see if uh, we have a couple more questions. Oh, we have one or two real quick. Um, so actually, could we, could we use this QDM 3D to compare multiple data sets from 3DCS? So if I've got yes. multiple simulations? Yes. 
we, we are, so so 3D CS data is is basically another data set coming from uh, we we treat that exactly as another data coming from another inspection device. So like the comparisons that we were able to do between the the two um, one from shop floor and one from simulation both could be simulation data and they could be placed right next to each other and uh, we can create a comparison a graphical comparison between the two. Uh, placed right next to each other and that can become a template a reusable template so every time you next time you run the 3d cs data your entire report is already completed and all you're doing is just replacing one of them with the new set of data so thereby you're really not creating a report every time once a report is created you're just reusing the same report for every different variation of your 3d cs run and within within seconds you can get an updated report with this new new simulation run. Um, we got one more question. It's really good. Here we go. Um, how does QDM handle a data point where the nominal is constantly changing? Uh, for example, if you were going to measure parts and assemblies with trackers and arms, mm -hmm. where um, your surface points are never really in the exact location, mm -hmm. unlike when you use like a CMM, where you're always going to have the exact location. Yeah. There are uh, multiple uh, tools within it. We're also developing more, more, uh, more tools to, to accommodate this. The, the feature name matching allows the system to match the data by feature names. The, uh, so that way, there, irrespective of where it's coming from, as long as it's measured as an edge point, uh, that all the edge points can be compared. The other method is by proximity. The system will look for a point which is closer to the previous point and use that for comparison. There is also options where you can manually match two points even though they are coming from different locations that you would like to compare two different data sets but they are they're named differently, they are measured in a different location. We have manual matching capabilities where you can match these two data and merge them. So there is a whole set of tool within the two software allowing you to uh, uh, match or match these data by uh, feature names, feature name and location, proximity, or by uh, manual matching. Uh, matching. Sometimes you can even create measurements which are close to the previous point and use that measured feature as to compare. So sometimes you may, you might want to compare, you're only measuring the two edges, but you would like to compare the point that's in the middle of that, of that edge. You could create a measurement to to create some um, new measurement at the middle of that edge and use that to compare to a 3D CS measurement if that's what you have or to another supplier measurement if that's what you have to compare. So the multiple tools to do that. All right. And you can see uh, Jamie working diligently here in the background. Jamie, what is, what is it that you have here that we're looking at right at this moment? Um, <clears throat> just trying to find some other data sets to add yeah, you're to some existing <laughs> charts here. How many, data, how many sets of data do you have in there right now? Is that three? I have three at the moment. I have uh, ten samples in the blue circles, and then I have uh, a couple of 30-piece data sets that are uh, laid right on top of it. So, I mean, if we aren't necessarily strictly comparing these data sets, this would be a nice way, too, just to look at a whole bunch of data sets on one, like a summary page almost, so I can see a lot of data all in one place as well. Yeah. Especially if my, in, in since I can use different lower and upper spec limits as you showed previously, I could technically look at a lot of data all in one and since it's going to normalize it all around those upper and lower spec limit lines, I mean I could quickly tell from say seven different parts whether or not I've got trouble areas or any issues and I'd have a one page report and I'd do it all on. Sometimes you would use it just for correlation to see uh, when uh, from right side of the door to the left side of the door is both of them moving, <clears throat> there is variation on both, but are they moving in the same direction? Are they both on the outward or both are inward? You can throw those two data sets, even though you're not trying to compare them, you can, you can try to throw them on the same chart so you can see if there's any correlation. Are they, are they moving in sync or are they out of sync? I can see that would be very helpful. All right, well, all right, show us how you, so you basically you, you get into uh, this is, you can see at the top says GDM Solid Analyst. Um, QDM 3D is our current production name for it. Um, as we've done a number of updates, obviously, as you can see, we're showing you today. 
So we use the names interchangeably, especially here internally. So if you have um, if you have GDM systems currently at your uh, at your location, if you're in maintenance, you have access to all of these uh, features. There is one other uh, use case when you're using something to measure, like a perceptron station that you're using to measure your parts in line, and you're measuring every every part that's made because those are inline systems and you have the ability to measure every part that's made in your shop floor. Uh, sometimes you might do just a small sample of them on the CMM. Now there are now you could use these same methods to compare between something that's measured in line to something that's measured on the CMM. Uh, so you can correlate these two data and, and validate what you're measuring in line is the same as what you would pull that out and measure in a more accurate machine like uh, CMM, uh, or coordinate measuring machines. So you can validate if, if there is anything happen, uh, uh, if the correlation between the two data between the perceptron and CMM. A more more uh, more useful case is this is done very regularly in shop floors where they have any inline vision systems that these cameras can get knocked very quickly and they can they can move out of out of location and that can introduce offset. So you're measuring things with an offset. So it's very easy to take a, a set of data that's coming from a vision system and a set and a few samples exactly the same part measured on the CMM where you pulled one of the part and physically measured all these points the system can quickly correlate and 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 you can you can see the uh, see the uh, the 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 offset right on the chart if there is any and then you can correct the uh, uh, correct the offsets we have another tool which is plant data analysis which allows you to even calculate these offsets so that you can go and apply them to your inline vision systems and and correct your uh, camera positions. So there are some advanced tools on these comparisons, but the the underlying uh, method is is comparing two data sets like we discussed here. And that uh, the QDM plant data analysis that Tagu mentioned that's one of the other modules available for the QDM system. So the nice thing about the QDM system, you can just pick up the the, the smaller template and report authoring tool, which is very inexpensive, that's what we're working with today. Or you can you take that part and integrate it with other modules to create a larger system, whether you want to have it web-based with web clients or you want to use the, the PDA, the plant data analysis system, in order to, to do quick uh, analysis and uh, uh, real-time monitoring on your plant floor. So it's really customizable to your needs and very easy to do with all the different modules. Uh, here's a follow-up question to just what you were you were saying there, Tegu. Can you uh, get offset value information from the data sets when you're comparing a vision system to a vision system? So, um, please. So if you could talk a little bit more about the correlation yeah. method there. Yeah. yeah. In any two data sets, um, CMM was just an example that I picked, but any two, we can do correlation between any two data sets. It doesn't have to be, it can be uh, right side of the door to the left side of the door, and we can calculate the offset values. It could be from one vision system to another vision system. But uh, a, a typical case usually is, uh, they call the CMM correlation of vision systems is just to make sure the the, the cameras are in position that you, you take a few of the samples and measure them on the CMM and make sure that uh, your, your values correlate so that way you can let the system measure. Uh, but you can do it between two vision systems, yes. Fantastic. Now I saw you were, uh, <laughs> you were putting together quite a few reports there in the background, Jamie. So let's just say, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a real great user of QDM 3D. I'm in, I'm in the marketing department, so obviously I'm not a really good user here. Uh, so I, I need to make a report. I, I was given the two data sets, and, and I need to make a report real quick to, to, to present to a customer. Can you, can you just start from the beginning and, and, and bring all my data in and just make a report for me with a comparator chart? Uh, we just got a couple minutes here, so those of you who want to stay on, can you just show me how to, how to put one of these together? Absolutely. Um, let me go ahead and grab our HSF file. So you're importing HSF file, which is going to be our CAD data, right? That's our right. that's our graphical images. Okay. So now you're going to import. <coughs> oh, so I can see I see other CAD files and I just so there's a number of different CAD files I can use. You can use CAT parts, JTs. Uh, 
if you, right. with with the right you know translator package. And a DCS DB2 file, that's a a 3D CS data file. Okay, so I'm just import that next. Let's see. I remember. Yeah, it turned shaded off because it seemed like it was uh, trying to refresh all the time during the webinar. Gotcha. Webinar and viewing the shaded yeah. pad is really funny sometimes. <clears throat> I have to go to webinar because the way it's uh, picking up the screen capture. All right, so now we're adding charts. Parator, okay. I did that by clicking on the data, right? Yeah, I brought up the edit chart page and tell it I want to change all the data to a chart type of a certain. Got it. I just got to manually size it because it was copying the size from the measure right. name. And one nice thing is when you're creating these, a lot of times you're creating a template. So once you create the template, you can just load the template and then just bring your data into the template and it'll all have all this stuff already formatted for you. Right. So this is just a one-time activity that you need to do right. for the part. Okay, and that was the auto sort, ergonomic placement. Okay, so uh, we have still a couple of attendees on while well, he's, uh, okay, so we got it all set up here. I'm going to um, attach in two other webinar recording links to the aftermath. One of them is going to be the QDM 3D reporting, which will actually show you all of these different um, click-through paths that he's doing. And I know that um, a lot of our customers, uh, you know, since they work so much with templates, only have to do these one-time uh, reports infrequently. And uh, I know my skills a lot of times um, don't last over time, so I need something for a refresher. So you can go ahead and add that recording onto your resources in case you need a refresher on how to set those up. All right, now I'm going to add, um, I'm going to worry about the size of the charts later. We're going to add the new data set by picking the corresponding CM, um, CSV file. I'm going to choose one of the merge chart methods. Uh, name and direction is is the most useful for looking at each attribute and overlay the comparator chart. And there we have a result. Now how is it easy to do that for, for all? Oh, yeah, yes it is. Wow, okay. And then you can ergo place them, right? So that they'll, they'll be all be. Boom. Yeah. Okay, so now, and now I've got my chart, my report. So I can quickly, easily print this. And our QDM reporting um, webinar I'll send you a link to. You can see all the different ways you can uh, use this report or get this report out. If I want to save it to like a PDF or if I want to uh, to make it easily shareable with my colleagues. Okay, so mm -hmm. we're going to take a quick look. Yeah, and the only reason I just want to point out the only reason you're seeing this is because it came in as a new chart from the other from the second data set. Didn't have anything. That feature wasn't in the first data set. That's why it came sure. in as a little stray. <clears throat> I got two quick questions. Uh, first one, I, I, I think this is really important that we should address. What native file format are we importing within this webinar? Um, in this webinar, we're importing Excel files, but it could be any M data from any CMM or any inspection device, uh, portable arms, uh, gauges, any text file format that we have created a translator for that we can load in. We have almost created a translator for almost all the measuring devices that, that's in the market. Uh, if you run into something new, we have methods. We have a software called Data Grabber, which can very quickly create translators. Um, um, so, so we are our the entire system is based on standardizing data that's coming from different sources. So we can handle different sources 
and pull in data and uh, do this type of reporting. All right, I have uh, one more question. I think that's pretty important here. Um, so what type of comparison chart calculates the difference between two sets of data? So I want to know the difference. So difference of standard deviation or the means or uh, units or percentage. Is there a, a chart I have that just compares the, the differences between those or would I use one of those, those data charts, the tabular chart? Um, one one way to do that is, I mean, at least uh, in the software we have the ability to uh, display them side by side, so you can see the difference between the two well, of, based on any statistics capability, standard deviation, or any one of the statistics. But we we have different ways to export this data out, and uh, depending upon what your need is, we can uh, export that data out that you have here with all the comparisons that you want. Maybe if you want to just do a percentage difference between the two, uh, we can export. While doing the export process, we can create all these percentages and export it to, uh, to, to, to the export file. Um, we're also looking at uh, different inbuilt options that would be in the future versions of the software where we can create correlation between the two and, and uh, display the correlation numbers right on the chart. So uh, right now the chart is uh, displaying all the statistics and showing you the difference side by side, but during export we can calculate all the, the differences and then uh, export them out. Fantastic. Okay, well, thank you for showing us that, Jamie, and we appreciate it. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Looks like we're just running out of time here. Um, we're all going to stay on the line for about five more minutes, just in case you have another question that comes up while you guys are signing off. But um, at this time, we're, uh, that's everything we're going to be covering for today. So I really want to thank everyone for their time and their attention today. I know we're all really busy, and I really appreciate everyone taking the time out of their business day. Once again, uh, my name is Ben Rees. I was your moderator today, uh, Tegu Vivek. Uh, he's the project manager for the QDM and GDM systems. He uh, had a little bit of input to help us out today. And then Jamie Dutton was your presenter today, showing you these different uh, comparator charts and how to compare data. So please feel free. Uh, uh, Jamie, if you could just bring up that uh, Q&A slide real quick for me. And I'm going to go ahead and put my email into chat. And you will be receiving an email uh, probably tomorrow with the, um, with the recording. Uh, I'm going to be cutting out some of the intro for the recordings. So that way it's just going to be kind of the, the main part of the webinar for you. So there's not as much of that introduction stuff as the recording probably doesn't need all of that. Um, and you should be receiving that probably tomorrow. I'll be emailing that out with links to two of the other webinars we've done that are related. And of course, the, uh, the presentation uh, material itself. So you should be getting that in your mailbox. Um, if you have any other questions, too, feel free to email us or email me here at brees at 3dcs.com, and uh, I'll bring the tech team in to help answer your questions so we can make sure that uh, everything is clear. So I want to thank everyone for coming today. Like I said, we're going to stand for a few more minutes uh, just to answer a couple other questions, but uh, we're all set safe for our main content, and thanks again for joining us. So uh, I got two more questions that did come in. Uh, let's see here. Um, we would like uh, one of our customers would like to see an actual how a correlation study would be done. Um, let's see. All right. Let me answer before we show that um, before we show that correlation study. Uh, let me answer this other question real fast. Um, during the last meeting, it was mentioned that charts would work with different point IDs as long as they had the same x y z coordinates. What if two or more points had the same coordinates? How would that work? If, if two or more points are the same coordinates and if you choose one of this automatic option to, to connect them, uh, they will be thrown into the same chart. But then you will have the ability to go and um, uh, kind of weed out the ones that, are, that doesn't belong to that chart and, uh, and, and then group them as a different chart. So at that case, in those, in those uh, situations, you would use this manual method to merge, but uh, if you choose the automatic method to merge and choose the option to merge by the location, 
it would uh, it would automatically merge all the options, the, all the chart features that belong to the same uh, feature in into the same location. So for that reason, we came up with the option of by feature name. Um, so that way, the system can only look for the things which are of the same similar feature name, so that it is not looking by position. So in the same location, you might have measured four features, then it would only compare. Uh, the same features and group them together and merge them and do the comparison based on that. But uh, for these type of situations where the automation doesn't uh, give you the result that you require, uh, then we have the method of manually uh, going and editing those charts and then regrouping them the way you want them to. All right. Uh, fantastic. Uh, going back to that, uh, the correlation question, uh, that is done in our tool called uh, GDM PDA. And what we will do is we'll send you some screenshots of the correlation results and how, how multiple correlation can happen to as a part of, in, as an email with screenshots and descriptions. Um, it will be easy, easy to do that. We're not set up to uh, pull the 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 GDM PDA with data sets, multiple data sets at this point. But we can very easily, we have that information, we can share that with you. If you can, Ben, you know who uh, the, we, if we know the uh, name and contact. Sure, no problem. Um, so is it easy to import data from components into uh, 3D CS models to compare the assembly data versus the plant data? So. I believe that's talking about um, this virtual assembly. Yeah. So we want to pull data into 3DCS. Um, so with with pulling data into 3DCS, it's kind of a different process since 3DCS is, is model based. Um, is that something you yeah. want to talk to for just yeah, a moment? Yeah, I can I can explain that. Yeah, the the idea of the first step is to visualize the the comparison in the QDM software on the dip, on how the design data and you pull in the corresponding shop floor data. So once you visualize that, you might want to use that shop floor data back in the 3DCS to replace the simulation and rerun your model. And the system's got a direct capability of exporting all the matched features in the in the QDM 3D to export it out. And uh, uh, we call that a DCS DB2 file, which can directly be imported into 3DCS and replace uh, replace the shop floor capability or shop floor data and regenerate your uh, your model simulation runs so that now you can visualize the the 3dcs model results but with shop floor data yes you do have the capability to export the data out of qdm after you validate it on the qdm report um, with the data coming from shop floor and then export them out so it can be directly loaded into 3dcs and replaced and rerun the simulation to visualize the shop floor capability in 3DCS. Fantastic. Um, I just want to mention that 3DCS also has the capability to read statistical data directly from the measurement data server. If you've got QDM web or GDM web, you can pull the data directly from the server that you're pulling all your inspection data to and bring that into 3DCS. You can model what your actual data looks like. So you can see uh, in your 3DCS system what your, your as-built product is going to appear and run the simulation on that. So with the web, it allows you to be able to query, navigate, and get the shop floor data and export it in a format that it can be used in 3DCS and use that in 3DCS. Fantastic. OK. Looks like uh, we've got time for this last question. Um, and uh, can, can we show how to do a correlation study with a vision system versus CMM data set? Do we have any kind of data or anything that we can talk about or show uh, a chart that would kind of illustrate that? Or is that something that probably best as a follow-up? I, I think it will be best as a follow-up because it, uh, it, it, it might take at least five to ten minutes to pull all the data up and uh, demonstrate it. But that capability is in, uh, in our GDM plant data and, and, and al analyzer software and then we can um, review that. We'd be happy to show that capability.
Okay, no problem. Let me just do a quick glance through here to make sure we're okay. Oh, okay. And then um, just as a final note, uh, 3DCS um, does have access directly to an Oracle or other database um, of measurement data. It doesn't have to be connected just to a, a QDM or GDM system or a, a DCS-made server. You can use uh, data from other databases as well. So 3DCS can pull in data from um, from other uh, from other systems. Yeah, it, it it can, but it is just the the correlation effort is with 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 QDM web the the effort of uh, of of creating this correlation and matching the data is uh, streamlined, whereas any other data you're really dealing with an Excel output and you are basically doing a manually matching it to your uh, features that you created the 3DCS model with. Whereas with the QDM uh, and the QDM web system, that process is totally streamlined so you can use them in uh, instantaneously or, or um, um, streamlined, is a streamlined process of doing that. Fantastic. All right, looks like we're out of time today. Um, if anyone has any more questions, please email them in to us, and we'd be more than happy to, to uh, answer them or to set up a, a web call with you a little bit later to, uh, to go over that with an example. Um, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and mute it, and then in just two minutes, I'm going to close down the webinar. I'll leave the Q&A uh, slide up here just for those two minutes in case you want to jot down some contact information. Now that email coming out to you tomorrow will come from my email address, the brees at 3dcs.com. So you can just reply to that if you've got any questions um, or if you want any more follow-up. Uh, those of you who asked a couple questions today will be contacting you sooner than that uh, just to make sure that uh, if you need any additional information, we can provide that to you in a timely fashion. So thank you again, everyone, for coming today. We really appreciate your time. and. Uh, Please keep your eye out or join our mailing list to see the next event we have coming up at the end of April. We're going to be doing another webinar event. I believe uh, we've got two topics lined up right now. We're just uh, setting resources for. So if you go ahead and keep your eye out for that newsletter, it'll have our next topic and the exact date for it. So please sign up and join us for our next webinar event. Thank you again for joining us today. I hope you have a great day.